good morning, boys and girls. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. As I was thinking about being glad in this day that, the, that God has made for you and me, I thought, what I'm really glad about is that God is sovereign. He is in control of all. And that made me want to sing, He's got the whole world in His hands. I want you to sing with me. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, boys and girls, that is so exciting to know that no matter what's going on in our world, that God's got all of us in his hands. And I want you to think about today. What is today? What special day is this? Well, if you told Mama and Daddy it was Sunday, that's true, it is, and that is a special day when we come together to celebrate Jesus and to read his word and talk and pray and think about him. But it's another special day, special Sunday today. It's Palm Sunday. And I'm going to tell you a story from God's true word, the Bible. Remember, every word in the Bible is true. And this story is all about Jesus and why this why we call this Palm Sunday. And it comes from Matthew chapter 21. It's a let's pray before we have our story. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Teach us what you want us to know about you as we hear this story today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Boys and girls, everybody was coming to Jerusalem. All the people were coming because they wanted to celebrate a very special day. It was called the Feast of the Passover. And they were coming to celebrate the time that Jesus had, uh, what Jesus had done when he rescued them from slavery in Egypt. Now, Jesus and his disciples were coming too. And they were just outside of Jerusalem and near a little village. And um, they, Jesus said to the disciples, I want you to go and get a donkey, a young colt, a um, very young donkey that has never been sat on before. And I want you to bring it to me. And as you untie it, if anybody asks you why you're getting it, tell them that the Lord needs it. And so the disciples went to do just what Jesus asked them to do. And boys and girls, um, the people had seen Jesus performing many, many miracles. And they thought, oh, at last, the promised Messiah. Remember, they had heard all about it from the prophets. Remember, prophets would tell them messages from God. And they had heard that the Messiah was coming, the king. And they thought, the King Messiah has finally come to rescue us from all these hard times because the Romans are being so mean to us. But boys and girls, we know that Jesus was coming to rescue the people from something much more important than that. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. As Jesus came into town, the people were so excited to see him that they threw their coats and their palm branches and they down on the ground for the donkey to ride over and they uh, to honor Jesus. And they also began to wave their palm branches and they sang, sang shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Shout that with me. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. And Hosanna means save now. Did you know that? That's what that word means. And they thought here was coming a king 
to save them from all these mean things the Romans were doing to them. And so Jesus came on into town. And we know that when he got here, he was coming to be their king, the king of all kings. But he was coming to die on the cross. And we're going to talk about that some more next week. But the reason Jesus was coming to die was because the people needed to be saved from something much, much, much more important than the hard, mean things the Roman people were doing to them. They needed to be saved from their sins. And you and I do too. And Jesus was coming to die on the cross so that he could save all of the people and you and me from our sins. Jesus knew that we needed to be rescued because sin is when we disobey God. And he knows that all of us disobey God. But the good news is, remember the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That means living forever and ever and ever with Jesus if we ask him to forgive our sins and to come into our hearts and be the king of kings of our life. And so um, Jesus was the only person that could do that because he's the only person that never sinned. And so this was God's plan to save you and me and the people that were welcoming him that day. And that is something to shout about. So I thought it would be good for us to sing praises to Jesus who saves us from our sins. Let's sing. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all you little children, God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all you little children, God is love, God is love. Oh, boys and girls, it's wonderful for us to praise God with singing. But another way we praise God every Sunday, remember, is when we have our popcorn praise. And so now I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes as we have our popcorn praise. But let me explain to your mommies and daddies what that is. When we praise God like popcorn, it means we just pop out those praises. And so I'm going to begin praising, and then I'm going to pause and let you pop some off. And I'll do some more, and then you pop some more off. So let's pray. Dear God, I praise you that you are in control of all. You are sovereign. I praise you that you love, that you loved us so much you died to save us from our sins. You are merciful. You are forgiving. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are our provider. You are our protector. You are our refuge, our safe place. You are our strength. You are ever-present. You're with us all the time. We're never alone. Lord, we could go on praising your name forever because you are all this and so much more. So we lift these praises up to you. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I want to see what good listeners you were. I have a few questions for you. What did Jesus tell his helpers, his disciple, help, disciple helpers to go into the village and get for him? 
Well, if you said a young donkey, a colt, you were right. What did the crowd spread on the road to honor Jesus? Well, if you said their coats and their palm branches, you were right. What did the people shout when they waved their palm branches? If you said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you were right. What does Hosanna mean? If you said, save now, you were right. And this is most important of all the next two questions. What did the people think that King Jesus was going to rescue them from? They thought he was going to be a king who rescued them from all the mean things that the Romans were doing to them. But what did Jesus come to rescue those people from and you and me from? Sin, that's right. And sin is disobeying God, doing anything that God's word tells us not to do. And that's why it's so important that we study God's word every day so that we will live for him. Now, I want us to close like we do every Sunday morning by singing, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And this week, as you sing this little chorus, now I'm going to tell you the words again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. As you sing that this morning, and I hope that you will sing it every day. As you sing that each day, remember what you're thanking God for. You're thanking him for the gift of his son, Jesus, who died on the cross to save us from our sins. Let's close in prayer. Bow your heads and sing with me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen.